Facebook, we hardly knew you. Today on Secure Digital Life, Russ and I are going to talk about Facebook and how bad they have been, Mr. Zuckerberg. And so we will talk about that and Cambridge Analytica, the evil empire, whatever they are out there floating around in the ether, looking at your data when you're not aware of it. So stick around. This is a Security Weekly production. Welcome to Secure Digital Life. If your users are going to keep putting risky stuff on your machine, you're screwed. So, talk and help us understand the, the complexity of blockchain. I was reading through the show notes, man. Oof. In binary, it would be 001. Uh, I have, who cares? But <laughs> <laughs> it's probably not significant anyway. Be like you're looking out through the howl dot, you know, like, oh. hey, Dave, Dave. It's like Sims, but with, you know, it would be like I Sims instead of only, AI. It's only. Roger Williams University is a premier destination for cybersecurity, offering in-person and online classes designed and taught in collaboration with industry experts. Using virtual environments that simulate real-world systems, you'll solve complex cyber issues and analyze cyber threats to prepare you for in-demand jobs in this rapidly growing field. Whether you're just starting out or want to advance in the cyber profession, RWU offers degrees and coursework at all levels. Learn more at rwu.edu slash cyber. We survived Orlando at InfoSec World, and you can too, but don't forget that B-Sides Orlando shootout at Full Sail is on the 7th of April, so you really should go down and check that out. I got the link to it on uh, on the show notes, so you can check that out. Students get into this thing free, so they got labs, they got speakers, they got challenges. It's like, why would you not go to Full Sail Live in Orlando? I will be at RSA uh, in April, so... I'm speaking uh, at 8 o'clock in the morning, which means that it will be more like, hello, good afternoon, uh, but on the 18th of April. So I will be there. If you're going to be there, be sure and stop by. I'm going to do a show from the NetSparker booth of, about uh, vulnerability scanners, so we can talk about that. But in the meantime, Facebook. Hi, Russ. Hi, Doug. How are you? I'm good. You're here. Russ is actually here, like in in the real flesh kind of thing. I am. It's so, nice to yeah. smell your scent. <sighs> <sighs> Smells like chicken. <laughs> Cheetah sweat. Cheetah sweat. Yeah. All right. We're going to talk about Facebook, and and this is one of those what a mess kind of things. Yeah. Uh, Facebook's been accused of all sorts of things down through the ages, and and yet again, despite their endless promises that they will protect your data, that they won't give up your data. They are in another jam. Uh, so Zuckerberg is on the hot seat one more mm -hmm. time. Going to testify to Congress. Yeah, as of 20 minutes ago. Oh, yeah. I just announced he's going to testify. I mean, this, this is not him being charged with anything. Right. This is him giving information yeah. to Congress. But you signed the agreement. You clicked the box. You agreed to be part of a human centipede. What Ooh. are you going to do? I better yeah, be on the front I, of that. I, yeah, I only watched the first 15 <laughs> the minutes of that movie. Segment, and I was like, okay, please. I'm not watching anymore of this movie. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. But, but I mean, you did agree to it. So when you signed up, you clicked a whole bunch of boxes and you sold and you gave your data to Facebook and you said, it's okay, do whatever you want. And guess what? They did. Z Zuck sold your data. <laughs> I mean, he, he always intended to do it and, and he did it and he's been doing it all along and they collect information about you. That's how they make money. I mean, did you think Facebook was just out there for fun? I mean, it's like, that's why that guy lives in a giant mansion. Yeah. Mm, I don't know. I thought Facebook was fun, but not anymore. Not after. <laughs> and there's been two instances of the same, you know, the same analytics or data mining uh, company. Uh, affecting or, or using data for two different reasons. One was the 2016 Trump election, gathering info on what 50 million users. 50 million. 50 yeah. million users, and the other one was the the Nigerian uh, election. The Nigerian prime was minister fell recently in, caught in a scam. Yeah, mm, imagine that. Mm -hmm. But I mean, there's two things here. So there's there's one thing about Facebook selling your data. This is actually a different thing. This is about people mining data from Facebook. Now, you gave permission for all this. You, you, you did. Uh, you may not realize you did it because you, you had all these buttons that you click. 
And we all do it. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I do it all the time. And so stuff comes up and you click a button and it says, I accept. I want to, I want to listen to this uh, uh, song. I want to watch this movie. I want to read this article. Mm -hmm. And you say, okay, yeah, sure, 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 whatever. And then, you know, 96 pages of legalese goes by and you go, yeah, whatever. Sure, whatever. Yeah. And basically what you agreed to with Facebook was that they could collect data about you. And, and there's ways to, we're going to, we're going to, at the end of the show, we're going to actually show you some things you can do to make this better. Because I mean, you're really, your choice is here. You can not use Facebook. Or you can just change some settings and, and, and be aware of what's going on, and all of a sudden it all works out okay. The first thing I want to talk about about this, though, is about Mad Men. And Mad Men, if you don't know what it is, is a, is a television show about the advertising industry in the 1960s. And back in the, in the 60s, advertising really came into its own. It had been around for a long time, but the 60s, they really started doing this. And Cambridge Analytica is all about this. So, so this is a firm in the UK. And what they do is they do big data analytics. Now, now this is like marketing plus. So marketing has always been around. From the very first time some caveman said, you know, if I paint these rocks a better color, mm -hmm. maybe you'll buy them. They're still rocks, but now I painted them a more, a more you know, a pleasing color. So somebody said, wow, those are better rocks than the rocks I can get over here. Uh, I mean, if you're going to go through the history of advertising, it is, it is like absolutely astounding what you can get people to do uh, and get them to buy things they don't need, convince them they need things they don't need, and convince them of things that aren't true. Mm -hmm. And this is from the very first snake oil salesperson who was riding into town and saying, you know, Dr. Shams, cure-all, loaded with opium, you'll <laughs> feel better. Uh, and the next thing you know, you know you're know, you buying Dr. Shams, cure-all. Of course, it's loaded with opium. You know, you probably can't quit buying it now. <laughs> and it's just kind of like, you know, Dr. Shams. Oh, keeps, cigarettes. Yeah, well, cigarettes is one of the greatest advertising things that ever occurred in the history of the world because they, they took a product and they convinced people that one, and initially they convinced people it was health. It was mm -hmm. good for your health. So it was like, and they were actually getting doctors back in their like 20s and 30s to say this was great for people with tuberculosis. It was great. For so they're giving people cigarettes. In fact, menthol cigarettes came about because they convinced people that they were better for your lungs if you were like <laughs> ill. So people were smoking like crazy and, and they had, and then, and then, so here's the thing. They started segmenting the markets. So market segmentation is this really important idea. And if you go back into the 60s and you look at cigarettes, even into the 70s and the 80s, cigarettes were the same thing. So it's a paper tube stuffed with leaves. Mm -hmm. It's addictive. It's dangerous. I mean, I mean I'm, if you want to smoke, smoke, it's fine. But I mean, it's a paper tube stuffed with leaves. Somebody convinced you that you needed to do it for some bizarre reason. You had to suffer through learning to do it. I mean, if the first time you smoke a cigarette, you probably puked. Puked, yeah. And you, maybe the second, the third, and the fourth, the fifth time. But you kept at it. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, you kept at it. I mean, I mean, I did too. Because I, I it looked cool. I quit smoking in 1986. But, but I mean, I, I used to smoke. I smoked unfiltered Pall Mall cigarettes because Kurt Vonnegut smoked them. <laughs> and, and once you start those, baby, there's no going back. Um, mm -hmm. but, but the idea of market segmentation meant that there were cigarette brands that were targeted to different audiences. So Marlboro cigarettes is a very famous example mm -hmm. in marketing. Marlboro was originally targeted at women. Oh, wow. And uh, women didn't buy them. And I don't know why, but they had a filter on them. And that was this new thing back then. And, you know, they had this nice little asbestos filter on there that, you know. But uh, women didn't buy them, so they rebranded them. They put a cowboy on cowboy. the logo. And all of a sudden, there were these manly cigarettes that were associated with, you know, macho of the Old West, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm tough. But I'm sorry, I, I'm gonna give smokers a hard time. But but the point is is that then there were cigarettes like Virginia Slims that were marketed solely to women. So they put ads in women's magazines. And this is called market segmentation. Big data, which is what Cambridge Analytica is about, takes this thing to the max. So the idea came out of like a lot of big companies like Walmart and people back in the nineties started looking at we have all this data. Why don't we mine this data? Why don't we use artificial intelligence to mine this data? Because we might start learning about things we don't already know. I mean, they already knew about people who went and bought beer. Mm -hmm. They already knew about people who bought cigarettes. They knew about people who bought snowblowers or whatever. But now they're like, we have all this data from our cash registers because they, they collect all that stuff. They know what you buy. They know when you buy it. They were tracking where people bought it in the store, mm -hmm. how they walked through the store. But now we got the internet. And we have even more data. And we actually, with Facebook, started looking at what people like. Because you click like. 
you click on pictures, you type comments, you have friends, you have all these things, and this is just waiting to be bought, obtained, or scraped, or whatever you want to, scraping is the term they use for like going out and collecting data on the internet, but it's usually more of an illicit kind of thing, or just a collection kind of thing. Facebook was doing this legitimately, and they still are. You agreed to it, and you went in there, and you set up your profile, you put a picture of yourself up, which is sort of <laughs> self-defining, you then start liking things. So mm -hmm. you go to a page and you like a page about the Confederate flag. That says something about you, mm -hmm. right or wrong. It says something about what kind of person you are. Well, here's, here's the other piece of this. There's a thing called the API. Application Programming Interface, for those of you that don't know. Well, the API is a library mm -hmm. of tools that lets everyone who wants to use a certain platform, whatever that platform is, share those tools. Mm -hmm. So they have those for games, they have those for Facebook, they have those for all kinds of things. So if you want to write an app for Facebook, mm -hmm. you use their API. Now there's other APIs you can use, but you use their API. Mm -hmm. Well, that API means that everybody who's using those two things can interact. Yep. So all of a sudden, there was a way for apps to collect information about you from Facebook because that app could just use the API to reach into Facebook and say, when is this person's birthday? Because if I have your birthday, I know how old you are. I mean, I, and if you, and then if I met, and so here's my example of this. So I look up your birthday, easy enough to get, and I see what your, astro I, I hate astrology because I think it's silly, but, but some people like it a lot. Um, I get your astrological sign. And when I get your astrological sign, what if I look at your Facebook page and I see that you also like all these astrology sites and all this kind of stuff? I actually know something about you now. I know about you personally. And this is a very simplistic idea. Mm -hmm. And I put that together and I say, well, this person's into astrology. They, I know their astrological signs. So what if I put up a page that says, hey, Scorpios, wouldn't you like to subscribe to my site about healing crystals or whatever? Oh, this is how big data works. It's creating market segments out of things that we don't know already exist. Right. So that's what they were doing on Facebook. So they were, they were going in there to mine this thing, and they used the API. So what happened with, with, the, with Cambridge Analytica was they went in, they jumped on the system, and they collected data from applications that were there collecting data about you from Facebook, from other applications, and from things that you shared with your friends. Mm -hmm. And by reaching in there and grabbing that information, they started building profiles of they went right back to marketing 101. They said, what is our market segment? So I have a candidate I want to promote. I'm not going to talk about any particular candidates because I don't want to get into politics except for Zoid. Why not Zoidberg? I mean, it's like, come on. Um, but, but, but there were candidates. And, and, I'm, and I'm not even going to accuse Mr. Trump of anything here because all the candidates are doing this. Mm -hmm. So whether or not it's right or wrong, I'll leave that for another kind of show. But, but the idea of it is, let's go back to marketing 101 and let's say, what type of people will vote for my candidate? And you can put whatever candidate's name you want in here. You can put Hillary Clinton, Bernie Sanders, whatever. And we could probably start to guess what kind of candidate you would support. Now, that means I can then reinforce that. Mm -hmm. I can send you ads for that. I can send you ads for Bernie Sanders and say, Bernie Sanders wants you to do this. Bernie Sanders wants you to do that. So that's marketing one. Mm -hmm. Now, but take it further. What if I can also start looking at new market segments? Mm -hmm. Are there people in the marketplace who don't smoke? who don't support your candidate, who maybe there's traits that you could put together from known things and build a new profile. This is, I could get a new smoker. Because if I advertise in this magazine, you know, healthful living, uh, maybe I'll recruit some new smokers. Or better yet, uh, the Sesame Street Guide, you know, Big Bird Smokes Luckies. <laughs> um, but if I want to get you to support a candidate, I might need to reach out and figure out what kind of person you are. So now I can go on your page and I can go, oh, look at this. This guy has all these Confederate flags and all these NRA stickers and all these things. Maybe that candidate would support my guy. Okay, so that's two. One more. Three is how do I convert other people? How do I get people to support my candidate that might not have supported my candidate otherwise? Mm -hmm. And another thing that big data did for them was they started building profiles of what candidates look like. So if I figure out, and so my example then came back to, uh, I think I was using some stuff about sports, which is never a good idea with me. But what if I went back to the, to the candidacy and I said, people who like my candidate all support this one team people who like the other candidate support this other team. And so I get some memes of the other candidate and I put hats on them that support teams that nobody likes. 
and I say, you know, not only does this person support this, these awful people down there in San Diego, they also support these people down in Mexico in the, in the Mexican Baseball League. And I put a hat on them and show them at a Mexican baseball game, which I don't think is a real thing, but, but you know, regardless of that. But at the end of that, you could start to sway the way people behave by this. And this is all just marketing 101. I mean, this is literally Mad Men. It's right back into 1960. How do we manipulate people in many different ways to convince them they need something, even if the thing isn't even real, uh, that you don't really need it? And, and another thing, Doug, too, in, in, the, in Facebook, what you're talking about, what made it more sinister is that a lot of the apps that people download, like using Farmville or Candy Crush or whatever, opens up their other people's profiles right. who, who you're friends with or exactly. friends with on Facebook. Yep. So that's, they're, they're not only creating new market segments, but they're using directed marketing to that marketing segment because they now have access to your friends and your friends' friends' information. And it becomes viral marketing yeah. in that same context because they, they try to spread that message from, so they mm -hmm. take stuff off your page mm -hmm. and spread it to your friends via yeah. these other things. And they're hoping that that same message then mm -hmm. brings more people on board. Yeah. So the first thing you ought to do in this whole mess is you should go to Facebook if you use it, and you should download a copy of your Facebook data, mm -hmm. which is very easy. And I put it in the show notes if you don't know how to do it. But if you click the little down, Russ is going to show you some of this stuff in a minute, but I'll just, you click the little down triangle, go down to settings, and, and just click download all your Facebook data. So mm -hmm. I went and did this. Mm -hmm. um, I, I had done this before a long time ago, but I went and did it again. I was, I, again, I was just absolutely astounded by one, how much incorrect information there was. Uh, but also how much information there was. So on there, if I went and looked, they had my birthday, mm -hmm. of course. Um, they had my wife's name. They had my father's name. They had my niece's name. I, I'm not sure I knew I had a niece, but I, I did. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, they, so that's stuff you would expect. But then I started looking through it, and they had stuff on there. Like one of my favorite things on there, it was 158 megabytes of stuff that I downloaded. And um, one of the things that I thought was most amusing on there was they had my favorite <laughs> athlete. And I was like, if you, if you call me on the phone right now and you said, who's Doug's favorite athlete? I would go, uh, I, I don't know any athletes, <laughs> actually. Um, it said my favorite athlete was Julia Mancuso. And I had to think for a minute, who is Julia Mancuso? She's a skier. And so she, so I was like, well, okay, at least it's a skier. It makes kind of sense. Yeah. Um, Dr. Zoidberg was on my list of things. So there was actually a link to Dr. Zoidberg. They had books I liked, movies I liked. They had stuff I'd never even read that was on my list of books I liked, but they seemed like stuff I would probably, I was actually using it. I, went, well, I should read that. But I was really astounded by how much stuff in there. My favorite restaurant was listed as Founding Farmers, which oh, yeah. I, I do like a lot. Yeah. It's a really good restaurant. Yeah. It said I love Claire Fleury. Hi, Claire. I, Claire Fleury's clothing, which I do, but I don't wear it or buy it, but it, it's a little bit extravagant for me. But, uh, but I, I do that. It said I admin a page called the Nemshub of Inky, which is true. Um, but it was really creepy that they have all that stuff, and then they yeah. could share that with big data, which can then churn through it and yeah. try to make some kind of sense out of me. Probably it just comes back psycho and uh, would not vote for it. You know, <laughs> But uh, nevertheless, but that's how Facebook makes money. So they sell all this stuff. But then Cambridge Analytica actually went out and got this stuff and was trying to predict people's behavior in the election from it. So think Minority Report. Thanks, Philip K. Dick. And I don't mean that horrible movie. I mean the book, which is really good. Um, but basically at that point, if you're a member of the Firefly, Firefly fan club and oh, you I also am. subscribe to Buffy fan club, yep. which I am, and you like Josh Whedon's page, which oh, I yeah. do. Dr. Horrible. Yeah, well, yeah. all of a sudden, and this again, it's a very simple one, but it's like if, if Josh Whedon is trying to do a new show and he's going to make a new show called Buffy the Reaver Slayer um, to mix all that together, uh, it's pretty, or I, I call it Buffy the Reaver Hunter was my title for it. Josh, if you use that, you owe me, man. Um, I at least want to get to hang out with you at Comic-Con or something. But <laughs> if, you, if he's doing that, he may want to pay for that data and find out I'm a good target to put something on my Facebook page. And I don't really have a huge problem with targeted ads because I would much rather see an ad for Buffy the Reaver Hunter mm -hmm. than I would to see an ad for something I would never watch in a million years. I mean, so at least that kind of targeted stuff is pretty good. But it's all kind of scary but that's what they were doing, and they were, t and, and, and were they trying to rig the election? I mean, this is this is a question that and I've asked myself a lot. Everyone is trying to rig 
every election. I mean, I mean that's the bottom line. I mean, wh- I don't care who the candidate is. Every candidate of any stature has a marketing firm. They're hiring people to do social media for them. I mean, probably anybody that's like House of Reps up has got social media people that are tweeting, that yep. are putting stuff on Facebook, on Instagram. They've got people putting up pictures for them. They've got probably got people out there liking stuff they put up so it has more likes and it gets pushed to the top. You can hire firms to push your stuff to the top of the Google search, to push your stuff to the top of Facebook, and on and on and on. And I think all of the candidates are doing that. Now, was this the more nefarious than that? There, were, there was a Canadian company. Mm-hmm. Cyber intellig- or intelligence IQ or something. Yeah, like that a- AIQ or something like that. Yeah. It's something like that. It was a Canadian company. Aggregate IQ. Aggregate IQ. Yeah. Uh, in the Nigerian case, Black Cube from Israel was was involved in that. But I mean, all these people are not necessarily doing anything illegal. So a lot of people have been asking me, was this illegal? And I don't think it is. I, I think they were literally just using Facebook data in a way that Facebook intended it to be used all along, which was using the API to write an app to collect data. Now, some people feel like this is a violation of their rights, but you probably clicked it. And if you clicked it, then theoretically Facebook had, now Congress is saying they need to pass better laws. You know, for me, it's like, there's an old thing in in, uh, Confucianism in China. And one of the tenets of Confucianism is that no law should be so complex that no one can understand it, that you need, every, every person should be able to read the law. And if you go look at Chinese laws, like Chinese tax code, I brought a copy of it back to my wife one time. It's like a little pamphlet. You know, it's like, pay your taxes this much. That's it. You know. mm. U.S. tax code is like, you know, volume 7,408 <laughs> of series two, uh, you know, the personal income tax. I mean, and it's like you need nine lawyers. And, and, and to me, if Congress really wanted to fix these things, they would pass a law saying that these, these agreements that you agree to on your phone, on, online, would have to be simple enough that an average person could understand it without an attorney present or without hiring a, a panel of, of college professors to write papers and treatises about what it actually all means. And until they do that, it's just going to continue because unless you want to read through 96 pages of legalese. Now, in the time remaining, which is not very much because I ran my mouth so long, Russ is going to show us how to see your apps on the, on the actual sure. system. So <clears throat> uh, let's cut over to the computer, please. The computer, Yay, please. Here we there are. It is. And look, my magical Facebook page. Yay, pay no attention to anything on here. Uh, so if you want to take a look at some of your settings uh, and some of the apps that have access to your data, uh, we click on the downward triangle and we go right into settings here. Shazam. And then we're going to come down here to apps. Okay. And we're going to start up here uh, with app settings and logged uh, in with Facebook. So. These apps are apps that I have used in the past uh, and uh, to log in uh, to using the Facebook. And let me show you an example here. Uh, where was that? Oh, yeah, you can book me. That's the one. So I go to a website uh, and I don't want to bother entering in blah, 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 information here. So I just conveniently go to sign in with Facebook. Let's let's try that. All right, let's do that. Now, this is the key right here. See where it says you can book me. We'll receive your public profile and email address, which uh, not terrible, right? Uh, but you can edit here. But let's not edit there. I'm going to continue as Russell. So I'm going to log in uh, to you can book me using my... Oh, they couldn't find it, which is probably a good thing. <laughs> probably a good thing. But once you do that, and I think many of us have, they, they start appearing in here. And I went through this the other day and cleaned out a lot of junk. I must have had 250 apps that yeah. I've that I've logged we in all before. Do. Yeah, but what we want to draw your attention to here are things like uh, right here where it says security only me. See the uh, Adobe Photoshop? I must have missed this one. Look, it says for. Oh, no, actually, I undid it so that I could show you. See where it says friends? That means that any of my friends uh, have access or or access to. Uh, the data associated with this particular app. So if I click on edit settings here, uh, what is it at? What is it looking at? It's looking at public profile. So it'll have my uh, information here uh, on my public profile. Uh, you see that that's required. Okay, yep. so that's required. Uh, and then here's an interesting thing. It also has access. They also have access to my photos. All right, so that's pretty wild. What if I don't want my friends to have access to my photos? Well, I, I can uncheck that in here, or we can go through a few things later on. The app can post on my behalf, which I never think is a good idea. Um, manage my business. I don't even know what the heck that <laughs> means. Uh, so let's 
uh, let's go ma- manage your business. Yeah, manage my business. Uh, yep, uh, manage my pages. Uh, as you can see, defaults all along, right? I didn't yep. change that. Uh, so anyway, uh, notifications and all that stuff. So I can save or cancel, but what I want to do is, at the very least, I want to uncheck the things that I don't want happening here. I don't want them to do any of this stuff. Okay, that's fine. And I don't. I don't. I usually don't ever want friends or anyone else, for that matter, to see anything um, that I do. So I usually click on only me right here. All right, and then so now only I can see those things or, or gain access to that data. Uh, and then now notice how it says only me right here. And if I click on edit, uh, you'll see that now everything else was unchecked, and now it only has my public profile. For better or worse, that's what it is. So. You'll see, and, and I bet you many of you who have used Facebook, I mean, I've used it for probably about 10 years now, I think. So I've collected a minimal amount of stuff, minimal, uh, because I don't play those silly online games, or mostly uh, silly online games or anything like that. That's but what he says. See, this words with friends here, I could have sworn I deleted that the other day, <laughs> so yeah. I'm getting rid of it. I don't want anything to do with it. But when you do that, I also want to call your attention to this checkbox here. And this checkbox does not exist in every single app that you use. So you only see this in a few ones. I also want to delete all posts, photos, and videos on Facebook that Words with Friends has, um, you know, posted. All right. So I'm going to remove all of that, all that data, all of that information, because I don't have any interest in, in, in carrying that through. But, so, be, but be careful. Rem- remember that when you do that, you are deleting a lot yeah. of stuff. And if you delete all your stuff, you may lose things that you wanted to exactly. keep. So, so be careful and, yeah. and just think a little before you panic and yep. start. I mean, this stuff's been yeah. on there for a while. They already got your stuff. So you don't need to panic and just start yeah. deleting everything wantonly because that's your inclination, or at least yeah. it was mine. And if you do, you may suddenly find out that all your Yelp reviews are gone. Yeah. Or, or, or you all know, your YouTube videos you posted. Or all your YouTube videos yeah. that you posted are gone. So be careful and, and actually read it and, and think about what you're doing yep. before you just jump in. And then finally, one more thing to um, demonstrate here is if you come down here to uh, beneath uh, the, the apps, right? We're going to go to apps others use and click on edit and look at all of this data here. Now, yesterday uh, it had... Everything. A lot of this. Oh, a lot. Yeah, it didn't have every. It, it, it probably did at one point, but maybe I was just smart enough to, re, but not smart enough to do everything. Uh, apps other use. So people on Facebook can see your info. Uh, bring it with them. This is the key. Bring it with them when they use apps. Uh, specific apps. Yep. So I don't want that ever, ever, ever. So I uncheck all this garbage here, and and now going forward. Um, moving forward, these these apps won't be able to do that, right. and obviously hit save. Um, so that protects you here to four, or, or for you know in the future. But here to four, you're kind of screwed. Yeah, because your data has already been shared, and yeah. and legally, I would say, and I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not giving you legal advice, but. Basically, your data, the data that you've already shared is already out there and getting that back is going to be very challenging because they can say, well, you had approved it. Mm-hmm. You, you changed that as yeah. of uh, the 27th or 28th of March or whatever the day is. Mm-hmm. And as of that point, yes, they should not be using your data. But what you notice with that is it says they can, they can carry it forward. Yep. So that means if you're friends with me and I download a game that uses an API to collect information, when I click that and I say, you can also collect information about all my friends, it can collect your data too. Yeah. And if you're, and then it turns into friends of friends and all these other things. And there's all these layers to it that's really tricky to sort of sort out. So a lot of people were saying, let's just drop, get rid of Facebook. <laughs> I don't want to get rid of Facebook. I mean, I, I use Facebook. I'm yeah, not so like a I, huge Facebook yeah. user, but I have a lot of pictures on there and all this kind of stuff. And and I and I like it. I mean, yeah. it's convenient to glance at every now and then and see what's going on yeah. with with people, but and can message people or whatever. But remember, there's a lot of information there, and there's also a whole thing about Android phones. Uh, Facebook Messenger on Android phones was collecting information from your phone, mm-hmm. so it was actually contacts. collecting contacts and all kinds of information. Yeah. And again, you agreed to it, but you may not realize you agreed to it, and it was actually then uh, that information was being collected by Cambridge Analytica as well, and they dump all this into their AI. And their AI starts churning it, and it starts looking for trends and patterns. And again, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it, but it gets really back to Minority Report. So the basic idea of Minority Report was, could you prevent crime by predicting the future? So they were using this sort of whole thing with these people that could see the future, kind of, which is silly. But, but I mean, if you could just predict the future with statistics. So if I could predict, based on your Facebook pages, that you're going to do something bad... 
should I go out and arrest you now and prevent you from doing that thing or let you go ahead and do it and then arrest you? Right. And that was the essence of Minority Report. And so that's kind of what this the scary part of this whole AI churning data kind of thing is, is that do, do people start predicting your behavior? And if they can predict it, maybe they start reinforcing it. And it turns into the bubble and the echo chamber and all this stuff that we have. And, and we saw that during the elections. So there's now evidence that, and again, this is no, no uh, assault on anyone about it being illegal or anything. But there's a lot of evidence now that during the election, these firms were indeed manipulating people with information. And they were sending out <coughs> viral memes, fake memes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, 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 and on all sides, uh, this is going on. And it's happening more and more because they realize they can manipulate people that are on the fence about a candidate mm -hmm. by saying, yeah, but would you vote for this person if they were a sex trafficker? Mm -hmm. And the person says, well, no, I would never vote for someone who's a sex trafficker. I got asked that question a poll the other day. They asked me if, if the governor was a sex trafficker, would that lower my opinion of them? I was like, uh, I, yeah, I, I guess so. I mean, I don't tend to vote for sex traffickers, but there's no truth to that statement, right? And they were like, no, it's just a hypothetical. <laughs> And on that, they were testing to see if using that kind of me message yeah. would get me not to vote for, for the governor. And I'm like, wow, that's a scary thought. Low blow. So all this stuff starts to become scary. And, and think about how much stuff you use. You use Google. You use Chrome. You, you use uh, Facebook. You use Instagram. You use Twitter. All these <laughs> things are collecting data about you. And all this data is being resold. So you might want to start reading those agreements. You might want to hire a couple of attorneys to follow you around everywhere you go. So that when you go to Disney World, like we were last week, and you want to ride a ride, and it says, you must agree to this. Because <laughs> I, I realized I had agreed to a whole bunch of stuff at Disney World just to get in. I was like, Wow it starts to be kind of tricky. You can't function in the world unless you click all these accept boxes yeah. and, and you get used to doing it. And the next thing you know, you're doing it all the time. What do you think? You're going you're gonna to yeah. quit using Facebook, Russ? I'm just not going to go to Disney. He's not going to go to Disney. Yeah. And no, I'm not going to quit Facebook. You're going to go to Euro Disney. Yeah, I am going to Euro. Well, well I, yeah, my family's going to Yeah, well, you, know, you don't even know what you have to give up to go to Euro <laughs> Disney. Oh, let me tell you, because that's in France. <laughs> and we all know, yeah, okay. I, we're all, we're all going to be in France this summer. We'll have to do a show there, too, maybe. If yeah, that would be, yeah. Now. We'll find a place to do okay, it. Okay, well, thank you. Next week, what we're going to talk about is building virtual lab environments oh, to cool. practice with, because several viewers have requested that uh, content. Mm -hmm. So that'll be on show up next week. Love it. Uh, keep those cards and letters rolling in about requests we get quite a few now and that's awesome thanks for watching sdl and we'll see you next time thanks guys